Hey, welcome to Board with Life News for April 30th. Today I'm going to talk about Machi Coro, La Nuit de Grand Polpe, Imperial Settlers, and the Kickstarter for Black Forest. Let's hit it. Hey, I'm Chris. Welcome to Board with Life News. Let me first apologize for the awful audio. I'm sure it sounds like somebody's uh, tearing the roof off my house right now, and that's because people are tearing the roof off my house right now because I'm getting my roof redone. Uh, so hopefully you can understand me um, despite all the pounding and craziness. Let's get straight into the news this week. Uh, so we got first up, Pandasaurus Games in conjunction with IDW Games because they merged and they're one thing now even though they're two things. Uh, it's had news on the upcoming Machi Koro distribution deal that they have. Um, and it's going to have, if you pre-order Machi Koro in a brick and mortar game store by May 28th, you're going to get an exclusive promo card that they say will only be available through uh, the pre-order. There are no details on what it does, but basically Machi Koro is modular because the board is made up of cards that you can purchase, and then you have die rolls, and whenever you roll the number on your card with die, you get the benefit of whatever you purchased. So you're going to be able to switch it out for one of the other things. They also announced that uh, Machi Koro Plus, the expansion to Machi Koro, is going to be released in the U.S. on October 14th. So that will give you more modular options to switch out cards and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, moving on. French publisher Yellow um, announced that they are going to be bringing an English version of La Nuit de Grand Poulp uh, to the U.S. And I don't speak French at all, if, in case you couldn't tell. I'm sure that... Uh, I, I pronounced everything perfectly there. But uh, I think that's The Night of the Giant Octopus. And it's a pretty Cthulhu-y themed game. It's kind of tongue in cheek how it's like not Cthulhu, it's a giant octopus that's sleeping under the water and you're trying to bring him back up and you're in a cult or whatever, but it's a Cthulhu themed game. Uh, and it involves secretly placing your cultists trying to resurrect the giant octopus. Uh, and if you place them in the same tile as someone else, uh, you either have to negotiate sharing points or you both lose points. If you place them and you're alone, you get points. And if you place them in the one with Cthulhu, I think you die or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's uh, keeping with the French board games having really good art. Um, so I'll keep you posted as we get more details on that. Portal Games has announced that they're going to be releasing their first game in the U.S. as Portal Games. Uh, they've had a lot of games that have come out, most of them through Z-Man, uh, Robinson Crusoe, um, Nirishima Hex, things like that. And apparently now they're not going to be going through other publishers anymore. They're just going to be doing it themselves. And that game is Imperial Settlers. Imperial Settlers is uh, designed by Ignacy Zerwizik. Sorry, there's no way. There's two Zs and, like, no vowels in that. Uh, but he designed uh, Robinson Crusoe. Um, and it's a card game where you're going to be building buildings and then sending workers to those buildings with the in intent of acquiring resources and abilities that those buildings provide. Um, don't know much about the gameplay. It's based off, I think, the 51st State. Uh, I could be totally wrong, so maybe I'm lying. Uh, but it's based off the mechanics of an earlier game. Um, but we'll see how that is. So the Kickstarter this week is a game that, if it's good, is going to be incredible. But me, this seems like they're putting a lot in that pot. But we'll see. It's called Black Forest. Um, this is a game that's sort of like Agricola, where it's a worker placement game, but you have a trader, like in Werewolf. Uh, so basically, I love the idea of this, where, like Agricola, you're building your farm and all that kind of stuff and having to make it work. But then there's also a werewolf that's killing you occasionally. Uh, so you can do things like build barricades or visit the seer with your workers. Um, and then there's also a Seven Wonders style card drafting system. And that is how you figure out who gets killed. But I don't fully understand how that's going to work. Um, so if that works, it seems like such an awesome uh, implementation of all those mechanics. But that's a lot of mechanics. So uh, we'll see if that works. It's $45 and you can back it right now on Kickstarter. So go do that if it sounds interesting. All right, uh, that's the news for this week. Short and sweet and to the point. Uh, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube. We're hard at work on season two of Board With Life. We're very excited about it. We're gonna have a new bit coming out next Tuesday. Um, so definitely keep track of us and uh, we'll appreciate it and be happy all the time. So this week's question comes from at adstra, A-D-S-T-R-A via Twitter, and they ask, is artwork important in board game design? Uh, and my answer to that is yes. I think it's actually, for me personally, so don't get mad, this is only me personally, artwork is more important than theme. Um, 
And I'll give a good example where, uh, this is actually one he brought up on Twitter as well, uh, Catacombs, the recently re-released via uh, Kickstarter game, that it's a disc flicking game where it's kind of a fun, cute dexterity game that's, you have mages and archers and monsters and all that kind of stuff. The original release had very standard kind of like dark and dreary, like first edition Dungeons and Dragons style artwork. Uh, which that didn't fit with the game at all, so the theme then doesn't work for me at all. The re-release has this really cool, really well done, colorful, very cutesy artwork that matches kind of the level of that game, and it then makes the theme really sing. Um, so I think that's very important. I think games like uh, Tokaido, if it wasn't so beautifully drawn and beautifully designed, it wouldn't be nearly as much fun. Uh, games like Sushi Go, I think the artwork totally makes that game, whereas the theme is kind of like, okay, sushi? But uh, the artwork's so cute and it really adds to that game. And I, can, I often get new gamers into gaming with games like Sushi Go or Tokaido because people want to play them and they, they look really interesting. That doesn't mean that a game can't be good if it has bad artwork. I think, uh, personally, like games like Bonanza are amazing. I think the artwork's pretty bad. I will say it's fun and silly, but I don't love the artwork. Um, so it's certainly not necessary for a game to be good, but I think it can definitely add to the experience of the game. All right, that's the news for this week. Make sure to sub submit your questions and all that jazz, and I will see you next week.